happy Thursday. Thank you for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time where we can relax and craft together for about an hour here in the evening. Uh, and we work on projects from beginning to end, so you can be part of the whole process along the way with me and make it with me. Uh, so you guys, we are continuing on the Splendid Sampler 2 Quilt Along. And uh, it is New Block Thursday, so that's when the, the authors of the book uh, Jane Davidson and Pat Sloan, that's when they release four new blocks from the book that everyone does for the quilt along. So we'll take a look at those those blocks and then uh, I'm going to continue on the Estelle block. Uh, we have all these itty bitty bitty half square triangle units. They are so small and these are what we're going to sew together today uh, into little pinwheels, I think. Uh, so that is the plan. Um, I'm going to flip you guys around and we'll get started. And, ooh, I finished that baby quilt. Um, I have it here. Uh, I won't unfold it all the way, but it is all done. It is washed. It's got like some fleecy bits and I did put a whole bunch of ties in it to hold it, to hold it together. And it, I washed it already so they all kind of shrunk up uh, which is exactly what I wanted it to do. So here, here you can kind of see uh, the ties. They're they're white, but it's just enough to hold hold the quilt together. And uh, when it was all 100% wool, so when it went in the wash, they felted a little bit, and that felting is what's going to kind of lock lock it in place for the quilting. So I'll um. Show you that quick turned upside down too, and then we will uh, we'll get going. Yes, so I got done with my baby shower gift a little bit early, so that's that's good. All right, I'm gonna flip you around and we'll get going here. All right, so here here it is. I stayed up last night and uh, and finished it up and then washed it today. So yeah, so here are the fuzzy little little wool yarn and that's that's what's holding it together just this white uh fluffy yarn so on the other side it's just you know the other side of the of the knot so we thread it through and it so it's tacked down basically in all these spots and on this side it's got the little wool thing and i just think that's a really sweet way of doing uh children's quilts like little baby quilts because you know then there's stuff for them to handle. So I wanted to make it a little tactile quilt um, by having the ties and also by having some of this uh, fleecy uh, minky type uh, fabric in it. So there's a little bit of different textures in it. So I just have to wrap it up and that is done. But it always is so nice when it comes out of the wash because it's nice and fluffy. And I don't know, I just really, I just love it. Now it's it's uh, love that part of the process when it's washed and ready to go, especially with those ties, they get super fluffy. So, all right, you guys, a splendid sampler too. Let's check out the new blocks. All right, we got Double Dutch by uh, Karen Costello Salties. It is on page nine. So this is awfully sweet. A couple of nine patch blocks, it looks like sewn together. A nine patch is when you have, you know, a row of three and three. So that's like a typical nine patch uh, right there. So fun, another good pieced block. We're in pieced block zone. So this might be a good one to do next potentially. Oh, Summer re Reading by Heather Givens. Now this would be an opportunity for, I think a nice quick one. Uh, there is a lot of different sizes and stuff because um, it's supposed to look like a, a stacked uh, set of books. So I've seen some people do this with a uh, like with um, salvage in the middle and it almost looks like uh, the book spine like the writing of the the name of the book and I thought that was pretty cute but I, I really like this. So this is a chance to like play with some of our fabrics. It's kind of like a showcase of fabrics almost. And then that's on page 15. All right, and then Estelle is what we're working on today. So we're going to come back to this one today. 
make all those pinwheels. All right, and we have Shared Squares by Jamie Mueller and Jill Rhymes. That is on page 121. Now this is quite the deal. Um, I think this is foundation paper pieced. Uh, it looks like it could be done just by normal piecing, but uh, it looks like it mentions, refer to foundation paper piecing. So yeah, so this um, must have some foundation paper piecing in it. I'm not sure. But that's like, those are some tiny, tiny, tiny pieces in there. But that one's pretty neat. It looks like they're almost woven together, those, those um, different fabrics. Pretty interesting. Oh, you watched her video. Oh, yes, yeah, so she has a little video on her blog for this blog. So make sure to go to thesplendidsampler.com and there'll be links to the designer's blog posts about all, all these blocks. All right, I'm gonna do the last one. Oh, and then happy, uh, happy trails here on page 130. Now, I, I know a couple of you have started this one. Now, this one is tons of little pieced squares together with a few a few half square triangles <laughs> and then it has a little a little horse applique on the top and that's leather it looks like but we were talking about maybe using craft tex with it which is that um that kind of paper it's like a it's a fabric like paper and uh, um, you can sew with it and it, it should last for a long time they're kind of like the the um the tags on like blue jeans on the back pockets. So hooey, that's gonna be, uh, that's gonna be a lot, a lot of little tiny pieces, but that'll be fun. So those are the new blocks released today. And uh, um, uh, now we're gonna hop back to Estelle. Oh, you blocked it, Leslie, and you blocked the memory of Estelle. Oh, well, we're, we're, we're gonna get it done. That's why I wanted to uh, make sure that now that I've, I've done a couple pieced blocks, I feel like we gotta um, get into this this one. And I know a lot of people had trouble with this. It's just a lot of small pieces, really. And a lot of organization of these uh, half square triangles uh, before we did it. Yes, we got, we got thunder snow today here too, and school got called off. Oh my gosh, you guys. It, first of all, it snowed like at least six inches of heavy, heavy snow. It is super duper windy. Um, we had a neighbor's small, like small tree blow over in the backyard and there's branches all over our yard just from the wind and the weight of the snow. And then it sleeted on top of all that. So <laughs> we got a good crusty mix of crazy out there right now. And and uh, oh man, it affected me today. I couldn't do anything. So I just kind of took the day off really and I don't know, barely cooked and uh, barely did anything. And I'm just gonna go to bed soon, I think. But all right, you guys, let's let's kick it off with this. This time of day, um, hanging out with you guys always kind of uh, raises my energy and raises my day up. So. <laughs> Uh, day's looking up after, uh, after I'm talking with you guys here, so that's good at least, because, oh man, I just can't deal. Can't deal with it today. All right, you guys, we are starting with, uh, step number seven here. Uh, so four BD block units. BD, that are these. That's this from step, from, this is from step four. Uh, those squares from that. So four BD units together as shown to make uh, the block center, block center and press. Okay, this is the center of the block. This is that, this little um, pad of uh, pinwheels there. The unit should measure two inches square. Okay, if our, uh, if our um, seam allowance and everything is right, this should end up being two inches square without us having to trim or without it being too big or anything. So let's let's just start out by placing these in the direction that they're showing on here. I'm gonna actually plop that here. So it is, it always takes me a little while to rotate all my triangles right, because I don't know, it's not, it doesn't come, I'm already wrong there. Uh, doesn't come supernatural getting them the right direction. Okay, so that's that's the top row. 
All right, and then, okay, the bottom row one just, yep, that'll be a pin pinwheel. So I'm gonna sew these two together and then these two, and then we'll press and um, just sew it. So in theory, I could prep all of my pinwheel pieces. You know, I have, I have all this over here, all of these, these guys yet. In theory, I could prep them all like what I did here all at once, but again, in this particular block, I think that risks me mixing them all up and getting super confused. So I'm gonna, for the sake of not being confused, I'm gonna give up uh, time basically by just doing it one at a time versus uh, doing it all at once, which can kind of save time. But no confusion is more valuable to me tonight, I think. So, all right, let's let's uh, sew these two together. Oh, I don't have a leader in here, so let's let's just get one of those going. Um, I've been sewing the sewing. Oh, good, we have one here. Sewing that baby quilt. So my um, setup here is a little off. Oh, and I lost the thread already. Sheesh, Louise. Sometimes with my, my machine, if you don't hold down the thread, it'll pop right out. I think the, yeah, happy trails. I'm gonna have to work on that one when I'm feeling up for a challenge. <laughs> you know, sometimes with, with these blocks, like we'll work on a really, a block that takes a long time or or that we've been doing for a while every once in a while you just want an easy one but then you know like this one we did a few easy ones and then I was ready ready to uh, ready to ramp it up and try this Estelle block oh my gosh I'm paranoid that I'm gonna get this wrong what I think yep this is still this is right All right, let's give it a go. Okay, that's the top row and then the bottom row here. Oh, Mary, that's awesome. I am loving this leader uh, thing where we, where instead of just throwing a little a scrap piece of fabric, as the leader, as this, as you know, just our thing to help us start and stop our blocks or our, our sewing a little bit easier. Um, yeah, I've started just sewing half square triangles together instead. And it really is amazing at how quickly you end up with a whole pile of blocks ready to go. Um, I showed you the other day, just, um, you know, I, I sewed, you know, basically three 10 inch blocks together already just from putzing around, just happen to, you know, we need, we need these leaders uh, to help start and stop. And I'm, I actually need one now. Um, so I have just a stack of these three inch blocks made up. I didn't press them. I should have, these are pretty wonky. Um, but yeah, so instead of just little trash pieces of fabric. We're actually sewing a whole, basically extra quilt. I just think it's just so fun. Magic quilt. All right, so here's our top and bottom pieces. I'm gonna try and keep them in order. Let's just double check. All right, yep. Ooh, and we, we got that point really well. That's good. All right, does that look right? Yeah. All right, yep, that makes a pinwheel. <laughs> All right, let's press those open and, uh, uh, or press them. They go to, a, one presses to the left and one presses to the right. And then we'll sew uh, these rows together. Again, I could have laid all of them out all at once, but 
I didn't want to be confused. So instead, we're going to just be hopping back and forth a little bit tonight, a little bit more than usual. Okay, so there's, there's the top, and then this one gets pressed to the side, so I'm just going to flip it upside down and press it open, or press it to the side. So the reason we want to press the uh, uh, seam allowances in the opposite direction all right, yeah, this looks right still. So like one seam allowance is going that way and the other is going this way. And uh, that's so that when we uh, fold it together here, uh, we can nest, nest our seams. So uh, um, we should be able to just bump those seams right up against each other along their fold lines and so along that edge. And if we are really accurate with our seam allowance and we go through this little point where these um, two line seams intersect, in theory, those should line up with the two that intersect on this side too. And if we, if we manage that, then we should have a perfect little pinwheel. So let's give that a try. And then we will be doing, I, I know we did this on the first splendid sampler for one of the blocks, but we'll be doing that little pinwheel in the back to reduce the bulk. And, and we'll have to try and, I'm gonna try and remember how to do that. But that's a little note in here, how to reduce the bulk because we are sewing so many layers of fabric here in this tiny little block, it's kind of crazy. All right, I think I went through that point. I'm just making sure I'm still lined up. All right, and then I need another leader here to get started. Again, I could start the next, the next square, the next um, set of pinwheels, but I don't have them laid out yet. I don't, I don't. I don't want to get confused with what I'm doing here. So we're just going to work through the leaders today. There we go. All right. Let's see how we did on this first pinwheel of the night. Ooh, looking pretty dang good, I have to say. Our points are pretty good. I think that looks swell. So this is the center of our um, center of our block. And oh, this is interesting. So um, I'm just looking at the instructions, and uh, the arrows are pressed opposite directions. And I think that's because we're doing the pinwheel. So you know, normally here's the back. We would either press to one side or the other or press open, which is just separating um, separating the seam allowance and pressing them like that. But the way to reduce a lot of bulk when it, you have all of this in the middle is um, you press one up and one down. And it's kind of oh, weird. So it seems in the other Like according to the instructions, this side should go up and this side should go down, but it feels like it should go the other way. It should kind of naturally just open and uh, you should be able to get, let's see. When you press one and down, then here we go. Now you get kind of like a little pinwheel right in the middle there. Sometimes you gotta like release a little bit, like get rid of a, a stitch or two. And so apparently this is the flattest way it can sit. But again, I think I was supposed to do one, the one on the left down and the one on the right up, but there's really only one way it can work. Like it, you can't go that way. So I don't know what I did there, but there we go. We got that little, um, little pinwheel going. So now we're going to press that, that flat. And that should be reduce a little bit of the bulk because we're just kind of evening it all out. So, yeah. Again, I'm still a little confused at 
um, the direction of the pressing because again, it should just kind of naturally go uh, um, the direction it wants. The seam allowances, like it should feel, like this one feels like it wants to go up and then it separates, you know, the rest of it. And this one feels like it wants to go down. I don't think it has that same effect the other direction. Yeah, so it has to go this way. So I don't know. I don't know. That's the opposite of what it says in the instructions. So that makes me a little nervous. We'll see how, how this ends up. Because <laughs> in theory, we have to nest those seams with the rest of the block. But anyway, we got our little pinwheel. Uh, let's measure to just double check that it's the two inches. And then let's just kind of peek what it's going to look like with some of our other blocks so far. Okay, yep, we got a two inch pinwheel there. That's great. All right, so here we go. Uh, now we can just, I just want to peek what it looks like with, with our other pieces here so far. So mine, again, is really pale. Um, you know, I don't have much contrast between this tan and white, so it's a little difficult to see what's going on here. But we do have a start to what this is gonna, what it's gonna look like here. So we'll have this real pale um, center area, but then we'll have like some pops of this yellow and, and all this coming up next. So, all right, uh, feel good about that guy. Let's make a whole pile more. So I'm gonna just stack these together again, keep everything a little separated so I can find it again. All right, next up. This is where we're going to start getting confused, I think. Okay, so to BE, I got to remember what the BE is. So, okay, that's the white and, okay, that's these. These are the BE um, squares and two EG squares. Okay, EG are, the, are these. Okay, let's keep these in order, though. I just need two of these. Two of these, and two of these, okay, to make that, okay, but then it says make four. Make four, but I only have enough for two. Hold on. So two B E and two EG units together as shown to make a corner unit and press. Make four units that measure two inches square. All right, but we only have two more of these. We don't have enough for four. <laughs> so something went awry there, you guys. For some reason, I should have, I should have four more of these. So let's just start laying things out and see what we got. All right. White. Oh wait, these are wrong. Oh, that's why the B E G squares are these. Ugh. All right, there we go. That's where the mistake is. I do have enough for, for four. <laughs> All right. That's, that's the, that's the, the real issue, not issue, but that's the real deal with, um, with these, with this particular block. It's keeping track of what square is what, because there's so many combinations of these. So now I got my eight and eight. So that's, that's good. So now we, now I got it. Now we can lay these out. So I should lay out four that are identical and we have the top row and the bottom row again. So, all right, this one and this one. All right, I feel better now. Now we got it. <laughs> it's our two stacks of eight. That's what we're dealing with now. We have, um, this is, these are both from the step number five. Remember how I had it divided into steps? These pi two piles of eight were from step number five. That's what we're using now. So we had two stacks of eight. 
and that's what we're playing with. And then now I gotta rearrange these because I'm horrible at making these little pinwheels. All right, that's one. <laughs> Let's make four more that look like that. That's not the right direction. We're already goofing up the direction. So I want them to be pinwheels, not something else. All right, it's gonna feel really good to get all these pinwheels together though, because uh, then I won't have all these random pieces sitting around anymore. All right, that's two. I'm taking my time again. All right. That's three. And the last one. Okay. There we go. <laughs> All right, I think we got it. There we are. So these will be our uh, pinwheels. Let's just double check. Yep, these are all on the left or on the right. All right, yep, we're good. So now I'm going to, uh, I think for these, I'm gonna sew all the tops and then sew all the bottoms. Unless that's a dumb idea. Maybe we should sew them piece by piece. Yeah, I'm gonna sew the tops and then I'm gonna sew the bottoms. Then uh, we have to press all those, then we'll have to get them all in order again, and then we'll sew them together. So, all right, plan hatched. There we go. <laughs> We're getting it. All right, I'm doing the whole, all the top row bits so they stay together um, because each, the top and the bottom are pressed in different directions. So I can keep the tops together and the bottoms together and that'll help me keep things uh, in order, I think. Okay. One top. These are such small pieces. I don't know if you guys can hear, but it is still sleeting outside. It's making little pings against the house. Ugh, such a sad sight outside. <laughs> It'll be interesting um, tomorrow or Saturday when we can get out again and just see all the branches down and, and everything. I'm, I'm glad we... Um, we had to take down two trees last year because they were kind of rotting away. And I'm happy that, that that we did that last year because if we had a, a storm like this, I'd be afraid we'd have huge branches come down. So I'm glad, glad we don't have to deal with that anymore. But yeah, a whole giant um, bush or like a small tree broke in our neighbor's backyard. And I think our other neighbor might have some tree situations happening too. All right, so here's our top four. So here, now I'm gonna start the bottom four. And they look the same, these tops and bottoms. So I'm gonna keep them separated. So I'm gonna actually snip off these four tops um, so I can press those first and then I'll do these bottoms because they do have to be pressed in the opposite directions and I want to make sure I get them right. So I'm nesting these seams together too, these diagonal seams. Uh, they bump up against each other and can be nested too. Yeah, I think by tomorrow, I mean, I'm sure our roads have got to just be hideously horrible today. I, I mean, we did not go out. Shoot, did I do this the right way? Yeah. Um, 
And it's funny when whenever we're at home, we're like, oh, we should order pizza and stuff. But it's like, you can't order, you can't make someone else go out on these roads when you didn't want to go out on these roads. You know what I mean? All right. This is our last of the bottom rows. Whoa. Yeah, this is not a block to work on when you have a whole lot of other uh, things happening around you. This is a stay organized and one step at a time block. Okay, so here are the bottom row bits. So let's go over and press. All right, I'm gonna move my book again. Okay, so these top row ones, I'm just gonna get those organized. Again, I'm just keeping them separate, so they're just separate in my brain a little bit. Okay, these we press towards this, this white side, so I'm gonna put the white side up on all of them. All right, there we are. This pretty, this yellow will be a nice pop in this block. Okay, so I'm gonna put these back as if they're the tops here, laying them out so I, so I can um, not get confused as we <laughs> are uh, putting these pinwheels back together. This is probably going to be the hardest part here because these are the most, we're doing four pinwheels at, at once. I don't think the next part will be as confusing. All right. Ooh, I'm not sure how I did on those seam allowances, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah, so our, our winter, we had a winter storm warning and that was yesterday and today. I think all the schools were canceled again, <laughs> which is crazy because they were canceled so much this year. Um, but the warning goes into tomorrow a little bit, like till the afternoon. And then hopefully it starts warming up like immediately. I do not, our, our hope is that it warms up super fast, which I know is not going to happen, but that it warms up super fast that we don't have to actually shovel any of this snow. That would be a little magic trick. But I don't think that'll happen. <laughs> I think we'll be shoveling a little bit tomorrow. All right, now our bottom row bits here. I'm going to separate those. And how are these pressed? We want them pressed towards the the side with the, the two colors, the non-white side. Okay, so I'm gonna put those on top. There we go, all right. I think we're good. Our little tiny baby pieces. All right, and then I gotta rotate them again, and there's our bottom row, and it's still pinwheel, so that's good. <laughs> we did it right. And that's a good sign. All right, there's another. These are what did they say? The four corners. I mean, we actually have a frame around this whole block yet. Um, we haven't cut the fabric for that yet, um, but um, we'll have this kind of center pinwheel area done, I think. Okay, we did it. So now let's uh, let's take a look. I think we got our pinwheels back here again. Yep, they all look right. This floral goes on 
on the right here. All right, so now we just have to um, do the tops and the bottoms again. And again, we're just going to match the seams up, the, the nested seams like that, and uh, get our quarter inch so we can sew right on top of that uh, where those seams meet. We should be, should be good to go here. All right, let's do it. Oh, you had to talk. Yeah, I feel like that too, too a little bit tonight, Noeline. Like I'm kind of just reading it out loud and not quite getting it. And um, yeah, I mean, it's not like this block is really hard. You know, it's some half square triangles and we're sewing them together for pinwheels. It really is an organization. Uh, um, deal. It's just keeping track of what goes with what. I think that's that's really where the challenge lies with this one. And these are definitely not did not press straight, so we'll see how close we are on. On these, which makes me think that I might not have sewn straight lines when I sew these half square triangles together for the first part of these rows, uh, which I sometimes tend to do. I kind of veer off at the end of my rows sometimes, so I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I am still aiming for that where the seams meet. All right. Two more. Yeah, especially, you know, when we changed colors. Yeah, if I would have done just the tan and the white and the blue and the red, like in the, uh, like in the instructions, that would have been maybe a one step easier. Um, but, you know, my red changed to yellow and uh, my blue changed to, like, this tan floral, so I had to, I have that extra layer of keeping things together. I think the biggest thing to do would be to label in the cutting directions. There's, the fabrics are labeled like A through H. I think putting a little swatch with those letters, just making sure, or making a note what fabric was what, that that would be a super helpful thing for this block because again it it is just like in keeping things knowing what what's what basically like oh what was fabric g again you know what i mean that's that's kind of the special deal with this block all right this is our last one attempting to get them lined up <laughs> i don't know how well i'm doing all right get another leader in here <laughs> These leaders with this particular fabric are going to be so odd because this fabric is so stretchy and goofy. All right, let's trim all these and see what we got going. So we're going to do that um, pinwheel back to this again to reduce bulk. So let's do that. Okay. So again, I should, well, let's peek at, at them first, though. All right, not too shabby. I'm happy with that. All right, so now let's kind of, um, you know, you can tell, like, there's the seam on the top here. That's going to want to be pushed this way, and the seam on the bottom with all the bulk on the bottom, that's going to be want to push down. So I'm actually doing it in the opposite directions than what, what they say in the, um, in the instructions, but I think... Pretty sure I'm right. <laughs> so I, I don't know. Maybe I'm not, but I mean, it really can only go one direction, really. So there we go. There's one. Just kind of smush it a little bit. We'll let that one be while we do these other ones. Let's see what it looks like on the front. Eh, that one, that one I could have sewed a little bit closer to catch, catch this um, bottom, but I'm not going to switch that at all. I think it's totally fine. Right again. 
these ones going to go up and these want to go down. And it should actually make a little pinwheel, a little tiny pinwheel um, when you do this too. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for that pinwheel. We'll smash these with the iron. All right, there we go. That one's pretty dang good. That, that one's really good. I like that one. All right, and just kind of open these seams. You might have to pick out a stitch or two but mine are just kind of flying open as I pull on it. There we go, our little uh, pinwheel there. Oh, you, you think this happened to you? Oh, it happened to both of you, Bonnie and Nolene too, that, that you're actually pressing. You know, the, I think the pressing instructions are upside down is, is what I think is going on here. Because yeah, I mean, this has to go up and this has to go down, like you can't really make it go the other direction. So I think, I think, they're, I think they're opposite, I think they're flipped. All right, there we are. So let's smash them with the iron. They're kind of pretty, like with the shadows. It looks like kind of a neat, like pastry or something. All right, I'm just mushing the back down and then I'll get it from the front too. But I just wanna get that pinwheel seam happening in the back first. Then we'll squish it on the front. We'll, we'll measure these two to make sure that they're at least close to two inches. I mean, I don't think I'm gonna trim or change them at all. Um, ooh, hot, hot, hot. We're just gonna let them be. Mash this. Actually, I think this is all there is to the center of the block. I think those other half square triangles are for part of the border. So, um, I don't think we have to deal with those other half square triangles that we made yesterday yet. The step six half square triangles. I think we can sew together this nine patch. And I think we have enough time to do it tonight even. Ooh, that'd be good. Let's get this whole center nine patch sewn together. I'll show you what I mean by, by a nine patch in a sec here. Um, but yeah, that'd be awesome. That would feel like progress. Oh yes, like little Chinese dumplings. Yeah, they feel like little dumplings, don't they? <laughs> From the back. Yeah, like we twisted, we twisted up the little dough on the back. <laughs> That's cute. All right, here are our shapes. We get to sew this together. Actually, uh, we're skipping step nine at this point. Uh, step nine is to cut and make the border pieces but I wanna sew this together first. So um, I'll show you what I mean. So next up, we did all this. Next up is making these borders, you know, that go all along the edges here. Uh, but the step after that is actually sewing all these center pieces together that we did. And it's not till that's sewn together that we do the borders. So I'm gonna do this and then tomorrow we'll start doing these borders. Ooh, I wonder if we can finish this tomorrow. I mean, I think those borders will take a little bit of time and we have to actually, um, we have to actually uh, cut the fabric and everything yet. But that would be kind of amazing. So I think I did press these kind of, these ones I, I did backwards. So I think my seam allowances are in the opposite direction than they're supposed to be. So unfortunately, I will not be able to nest my seams together like I think where it was intended by the instructions, but I did it, I did it backwards on accident. Um, so yeah, no matter what direction. Yeah. So your seams will probably be able to be nested, but I messed mine up. So mine, mine don't nest. All right. I'm, I'm matching up the, this tan goes with the tan and the white goes with the white. I'm just looking at the, the picture now to line these up. All right, so that's that. And then this piece, okay, the red goes like this. Yeah, the white bits go on the outside. Okay, oh, the white bits go on the top on this one. Okay, so white's on the left, white's on the top, white's on the right, and white's on the bottom. Okay. 
I think this is our nine patch. So what I mean by a uh, nine patch is it's just nine squares sewn together in a three by three uh, is what a nine, like a nine patch is. Ours are just pretty fancy uh, patches, I guess. <laughs> so, all right. Oh, you know what? I didn't measure these, but I don't think I'm gonna. Uh, we measured the middle one. That's that's two inches. These should all measure the two inches, but I'm not gonna take them out or redo them. I think this one's just a, a hair shy, maybe, but I think we're gonna. This is the best it's gonna be at this point. So, all right. All of ours are going in the right direction. So, I am going to sew the first column. Ooh, this would be a good opportunity to do the netting style of. Um, of chain stitching. So I'm gonna sew in columns, I'm gonna sew these columns together, but I'm not gonna snip them apart. And then I'm gonna sew this column and I'm not gonna snip it apart. So I will have a whole long dangly um, thing of our entire block and I'll show you what I mean. And then I think this will hold it all together though and it'll help. This is gonna be a good idea, the netting way of doing this because then I won't accidentally put like a row up too high or you know, flip a row or flip a block on accident. It's just gonna all be held together. So let's just double check. Left, top, right, bottom. Okay, we're good. Let's go. So I'm gonna grab the top, uh, the top row, the first two, and I'm gonna keep them upright. I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna like flip them and sew on this side. I wanna, I need to sew from the top to bottom on, on all these. So I'm gonna flip here. So the trick is, since my seams are not gonna nest, since I did these squares backwards, I'm, I'm just going to, you know what, maybe I will clip it even, even if it were so little, but I, I do just wanna try and get these seams to match. So I'm just gonna clip right where the seams should meet, at least just to get going here. All right, now I'll get my little stiletto in there. Ooh, it's not going, so I'm gonna just pull there. I just pulled on my leader a little bit back there and that got the feed dogs pulling it along again. Okay, so that's the first, um, first row, first column. This is the second row, the first column. Again, I gotta sew from the top to bottom. Don't don't flip it and then sew from bottom to top. You need it to top and bottom for this webbing. Again, my seams will not match up, which is a bummer because that would have been a cool little magic trick to have all these seams magically nest together. But mine are mine are backwards, and that wasn't worth it to go back and redo those. So <laughs> they're just gonna stay stay backwards. All right. All right, now the third row in the third column. Again, sewing from top to bottom. Oh gosh, yeah, this one wasn't quite the same size as this, oh well. <laughs> Luckily, my it's not so far off that um, you know, I could just, it'll be a little less than a quarter inch seam allowance versus a perfect quarter inch seam allowance on some of this. Some of these seams. All right, so that's our first column. I'm gonna actually take it off of the machine now um, instead of starting the next column. And to do that, I need my leader again. I really should have pressed this fabric before I cut it, but oh well. So wrinkly. Magic quilt, magic quilt, making a magic quilt. All right. So uh, here is our first column. I'm not gonna flip it. It's top to bottom here. And I'm not. I'm not gonna snip these at all either. So now all I have to do is grab the top one from the next row and leave leave all this together. So let's flip that and again we're sewing top to bottom. Ooh, now this one nests. All right, well that's cool. 
This one I can nest the seam together. So I'm not gonna use a clip. Um, when I nest the seams together, you can just feel that they're bumping up to next to each other. So unless I have like a big long row, I don't really need to clip it because I can feel that they're together. Um, you know, you could clip it, but I feel confident that I'm holding them together. All right, there's the first row, the, the third column. Right now, this is our second row. I'm just gonna grab that one and flip it around. Oh, not this one. This one we're not nested, so I'm gonna just clamp those together. When they're nested, they kind of want to stay together because um, they just fit. But when they're not nested, like here, I got four layers of fabric on one side and only two layers of fabric on the other, so it's gonna want to shift around a little bit. Okay, and here's our bottom row and. So far, things are matching up okay. All right, flip that guy around. Good, this one nests as well. Yay, I'm so happy we're getting this together today. All right, I need another leader. for magic quilt. Okay, so now, so that was the netting style of uh, chain piecing and I'll show you why that's awesome. So here we go. Um, so I didn't clip anything apart and because I didn't, my whole block is being held together like in the order that it needs to be. So I'm not gonna accidentally put a, you know, I didn't accidentally put this row on the top or anything goofy, which might have happened if I didn't have it all together. But right now I have like a hanging version of my block. Oh gosh, these just get smaller and smaller when you sew them, don't they? Crazy. So let's just check out the top row. All right, so this is the side that we were able to nest. Look how much nicer that is than the side that I wasn't able to nest. It just slid a little bit, right? Whereas this side that I nested is just just perfect. Yeah, these these ones too. I think um, I wasn't quite able to nest them because I, I did these the wrong direction. Uh, so they're not exactly right. So that nesting really makes a difference. Yeah, look, these this one's nested, this one's not. It really, really makes a difference. Oh well. So, all right, um, let's press these. So I'm looking at the instructions. It looks like the top and bottom rows gets pressed towards the inside and this middle row gets pressed outside. So we need to press these before I sew the rows together, but I'm, I'm leaving them attached like this and then I can just flip them over and sew them together. I don't ever have to cut these strings apart. So that's kind of a neat, neat little deal here. All right, let's press these. So again, the top and bottom rows press towards the inside. Okay, I'm gonna scooch you two piles out of the way. It is a little difficult to press, um, press when they're all connected, but I think it's worth it. All right, these are pressed towards the inside. There we go. Let's do the bottom row right away. Look at those little back pinwheels are so cute. Yes, exactly, exactly, Christy. Getting it to 80%, 80% good. There's no way I would unpick those little, um, unpick those seam allowances and redo them. Or unpick them, yeah, unpick those blocks so that the they match up perfectly. But it really is, you know, I, I had to do a lot of work to not get it perfect, right? I had to clip it together and, and all that versus the ones that were nested together. I could just nest and be done with it real quick and uh, yeah it made a made a difference all right now this middle row these are pressed outward okay outward 
There we go. That wasn't that hard. I'm going to hit this from the front too. Okay. Squish them all down. It's coming together. Okay. This is really a light block, isn't it? <laughs> with these colors, but it eh, goes with the rest of the quilt. All right, so now I'm gonna just take this row. I think this is actually the top. It doesn't really matter. They're the same on, on either side, but I remember the top I accidentally did a little long there. Um, but I'm just gonna flip that over. And now again, our seams should nest perfectly. Gosh, look at all the seams though. Let's match up the correct seams. So in this case, I'll probably clip because there's a lot going on here. Actually, I can, these seams should all match too. So I really, really should clip every single one of these seams. So let's, let's do that. I'm going to nest the ones that we just pressed though first, because I know that those ones are, are um, pressed on purpose in the opposite direction. So those are for sure nested. But yeah, in theory, all of these other lines we want to want to get matched up, even though the seam allowances aren't going in the same direction. This middle one. Yeah, let's just clip them all. Just to double check. All right. Bonus points if all those match up. <laughs> all right, so that's our first row. And then after this, we will sew uh, the, the bottom row to there. All right, we're going a little late tonight, but I'm happy that we're gonna get this bit done. Ugh. Get all those half square triangles out of the way. We just have those couple for the for the um, border yet. Okay, there's our nested one. And our second nested seam. Okay, get a leader going. Ooh, almost dropped my skizzers. All right, let's take a peek how we did. Ooh, not too bad. This was our nested seam and that looks really good. Actually, this non-nested seam looks pretty good there too. Ooh, got a fuzzle hanging out. That's our nested seam, looks good. Ooh, all our seams look great. Awesome, yay. Okay, now let's, uh, so that makes me think, good idea using all those clips. So let's do that again. I'm gonna flip, let's just turn it, rotate it the other direction and, and flip. Let's grab all my clips again. I know, fuzzles everywhere. Getting in my way. So we'll do the um, those nested seams first again. Just bumping up those folds. Then we'll go back and hit those other ones. And again, I'm never, I'm, I'm not gonna clip those where we where we uh, sewed our um, rows together, I'm not going to clip that little thread loop. We don't need to, I don't think. All right, let's get that middle one. Oh, this one can nest too. That's a bonus. Bonus nested seam. Oh, this one is too. Great. Great, great, great. Had one extra. All right, let's do it. Get my stiletto out, where'd he go? All right. Yeah. 
Oop, lost my lost my little hedgehog here. I just need more tape. That tape was on its way out for sure. Alright, that's that. That is the middle area of this guy. So all that's left is um, the border. So we'll be able to do that tomorrow, hopefully. I mean, there are quite a few pieces to that border, but I don't know. I think we can do it. We got those half square triangles made already. Alright, let's see how we did here. Ah, they look great! Oh, they all look perfect. Yes! All right. Let's press this thing and um, we'll call it an evening here. All right. So these ones we press towards the middle row. It looks like, oh, again, this is just a pile of bulk. Look how small this is. There's so much in this little square. This is probably like a five inch square or four and a half inch square right now. It's so... <sighs> There's so much stuff. All right, I feel like we got the hard part of this block done. We got the we got the detailed, uh, scary part of this block done. It is like home free from here. Now it's just we got to cut new pieces. We got to we have to finish cutting our fabric because, uh, like I said, I, I didn't cut I didn't cut everything for the border yet. So we'll cut that tomorrow. We got all our half square triangles made for the border already. Home stretch for sure, and it's looking awesome. There we go. Look at how look at how little these shrunk to. You know what I mean? They started out these big triangles. Now they're these tiny, tiny, tiny little bits. Oh, it is looking cute though. So all that's left is is this border. So um, you can see here we got a little points to do. That's those are the half square triangles that we have done already. And then it looks like we just have to cut like a bunch of little two inch strips and then some little uh, corner bits and um, sew them together, add little corners, and that's that. So I'm feeling really, really, really good. <laughs> really, really good about this block. Let's see, left, top, right. Yep, and the pinwheels are even going the right direction. All right. <laughs> So we will finish this guy up tomorrow, I'm hoping. Ooh, that means we can start out next week fresh. That would be great. All right, so I'm gonna flip you guys around and we'll call it an evening. All right, I'm feeling good. <laughs> so here we are. This is how little it is. Like I, I always think just holding it next to me, you can really see just you know, the size relationship, how how little all these little bits are. It is just silly crazy how small. And you know what? I think the horse block and that other block from, from today um, that looked like it was almost woven, I, those are even smaller than all these, I think. <laughs> so that those blocks will be interesting to try. Uh, I'm feeling really good, though, about this one now. Uh, all the confusion's gone. <laughs> I think the, it'll be easy from here on out. So that's good. Uh, so awesome, and thanks for making my day a little bit better, you guys. Uh, I'm going to go to bed and, and hope that when I wake up, all this snow will be melted and gone. That would be nice. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, I'll get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. Uh, and uh, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't get last night's up yet, so I'll get both of them up tonight. And I'll be back here tomorrow for Friday. Uh, yeah, it's Friday tomorrow. Sheesh. All right, and that'll be on the Penguin and Fish page on Facebook at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. So thanks again. Have a great evening, everyone. Good night.